short. Uh, good, good the student. We have some of them here, I know. They had the power of the clients two or three. There's a company is looking for one or two interns. If you are interested in intern, let me know. I will give you a resume. Also, they had the power of the clients too. You know, this is very focused on inverted control and renewable energy and those kind of things. So if you are interested, those when they had the power electronics to PCE 125D with me last year. Send me your Send me your I can pass it to you. I think there are any questions about the lab? In the small company, there are reports to start up for internship. I work for the lab company, which will come my recommendation to you guys. When you are going to start your, your, your career, it's better to start with a small company because you have to do everything. You have to even clean up the company, let's say, you know, wash, I don't know, dishes, whatever, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is funny, but it's good. You have to be involved with everything. Coming to a big company, for example, there is a big, big project. It can be a little bit, little bit, little bit, uh, little piece of this project to you, but very, very small, you know, people. And you will focus on that. But when you are a startup company, a startup company, a small company, you have to do everything. You have to do PCD layout, you have to do economy, you have to do control, you have to do testing, you have to clean up your place, you know, the lab, everything. It's good. To start is good. Maybe you get a little bit older like me, you will be lazy, you don't want to work that much, you know, and you don't want to go to the startup. But uh, when you are young, it's better to get to those kind of companies, you know, because you learn to go off. Okay. Any other, any other questions? What is the midterm? Midterm, let's talk about it today. This week is a which one? Four. Four. So we can schedule a show somewhere between week five and six.
case with the REQ3, I check the magnetization part in the primary, right? I can do that one. I want to keep that part over there, like an approximate model for the transformer, remember? The approximate model for the transformer was like this. The RCXM here, you had this RX transformer, and you had this one, another RX here, right? So just I want to move this one to this side, right? So I'll call it, this, this one is going to be our prime one, right? Plus R2, right? I call it R equal, equal. And there is a X prime one coming here, right? Plus X2, I call it X equal, right? You will see it in the homework, I don't know which problem it is. But you see one R, one X. Means they are together. You know, we use the approximate model. We, we put a R1 plus R prime 2 or R prime 1 plus R2 as one part. Again, for the same thing for X. Then you see one R, one X means we use the appro appro approximate model and we add both resistors in both sides and we add both X's, you know, and we give you only one R, one X. Now, we know the PR, right? How much is the copper loss? How much is the copper loss? Right? This is a, this is a uh, power loss in the resistance. Now, let's write down the efficiency. Efficiency is going to be P out over, over, mean instead of P in, I'm going to put the P out plus P loss, right? So it's going to be P out plus, this is the P out, right? And this is the P out. Plus P loss. P loss is going to be P core, right? PC. Plus PCU. How much is the PCU? Yeah. I to the power. This is the P loss. Right? So we can calculate the efficiency of transformer like this. Now,
the result is going to be efficiency will be maximum when P copper is equal to P coal. Efficiency will be maximum when P copper is equal to P coal. How much is the P copper? I'm the car. So basically I2 is going to be PC or R2, right? At this, at this uh, current, the efficiency is going to be maximum. But usually they don't say the, at what current. They say, uh, we're going to get to this one, the next step is the, uh, we need to do the transformer test, you know? They will tell you if this transformer is, for example, 10 kVA. For example, 10 kVA. 10 kilovolt ampere. That's the rating of this transformer. They said, at what load? Load here, you should specify. For example, 90%, 80%, 70% of the full load. 10 kVA is the full load. Every transformer, every electric machine, if you look at it, there is a plate on the machine. There is a plate on that, and they type the how rate 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 the power of the machine on that one, you know? And usually they put it in KVA or kilowatt, you know, either way. For transformer, usually they put it in KVA. That one is the rated power or nominal power of that transformer. They say at what power, at what percentage of the nominal power, the maximum efficiency happens for this transformer, right? Now, I want to find out because I'm gonna just change this equation a little bit get to that KVA rate. Let's put it here. So, let's put it this way. I full load, I full load, you know, full load means rated. You can call it full load, you can get it, call it rated power, you can call it nominal power, all these things, they mean the same, right? If I have my transformer, it has an S of N. N stands for nominal. S is the KVA rating. They say this transformer is 10 KVA. This is the nominal uh, appearance power of the transformer. So divided by VN. VN is the nominal voltage of transformer. They say this transformer is 110 volt to 220 volt. You should these are all on the uh, plate of the transformer. The KVA rating of the transformer is this much, for example, 10 KVA. So how much is the Full, full current of the transformer is the full KVA divided by full voltage, right? Now, <coughs> I want to know where the, at what S, at what S, the efficiency is maximum, right? I'm going to do this. I'm going to write it this way. This one is I2 is equal to, I'm going to put I full load here, right? And P core over <coughs> R equal equivalent I full load to the power of, right? Just like times it by I full load divided by I full load, right? So let's time both sides to the VM, rated voltage of the system. <coughs> I'm going to time both sides of this equation to VM. So VN I2 <coughs> is going to be VN uh, I full load times PC divided by PCUN. I'll tell you what does it mean, PCUN. So, PC, what is this? Can you tell me? This is the copper law, right? It's a copper law, right? RI is for it, the copper law, right? At full load, right? <coughs> I, I'm, I'll specify why I'm saying full load because the next one we're going to go to short circuit test. Short circuit test is going to give you the uh, co copper loss at the full load. But for now, if you look at here, this is the copper loss, right? At what load? Full load, right? So I call it PCUN, PCU nominal. The copper loss at the nominal load, right? This is the P core. What is this? Can somebody tell me what is this? SS, right? <laughs> right? What is this? S <coughs> eta max. The 
load, the efficiency is max, right? So basically now we can find out how much it is. You know, you're saying that S, S n max, maximum efficiency is going to happen at this load, which we can calculate it this way. S n times P c over P c u n. Why I didn't change the PC? Because the voltage is not changing, right? PC is a function of the voltage, <laughs> right? The voltage is not changing, PC is constant. Whatever, for example, if you don't have any load, let's say here there is no load, right? Zero load. How much the PC is voltage? <coughs> the power of the divided by this, right? Let's say we have a full load. How much is the PC? Again, this voltage divided by, to the power of the divided by this quantity, <coughs> right? The voltage is going to change a little bit, not that much. You know, I, we talked about this one. Uh, an ideal transformer, how much of voltage regulation has? Zero, right? The good transformer, they have about 2%, something like that. But still, 2% is nothing, right? So the voltage is not going to change. If the voltage doesn't change, so the P core is not going to change. Either no load or full load, right? So this is the how to calculate the, uh, the, you can calculate the, you can figure out how much is the load, the maximum efficiency is going to happen. But how much is the maximum efficiency? Let's do it here. At, at the max, how much is it? How much is it at the max? It's going to be output power, right? Whatever here I calculate, right? There is no loss to kill it, not by energy. I love to have no loss every time, but it's not under my control, right? As soon as we have a current in the system, right? As soon as we have a voltage here, as soon as we have a voltage here, we are going to have loss here. Correct or not? Right? As soon as I have a current, I'm going to have loss here, right? Because of this resistance. So, you know, what does it want? One is ideal case, you know, ideal case is efficiency is one. So if you want to calculate the, if you want to calculate the efficiency, it's gonna be this. V2, I2, cosine P. So I2 you can calculate it from here. <coughs> I2 you can calculate it from here. How much is the I2? Uh, V2, I2, cosine P divided by V2, I2, cosine P plus two, Right? Instead of PCU, I put it as P core, right? Because full core and PCU, they are equal, right? But at what percentage of the full load is happening? Yeah. It's very telecom. This number is going to be definitely less than, less than one. measure? 
R1, R2, X1, X2, and RC, and XM. Six parameter distribution measure, right? These are the result of this test we are going to do. This is a Basically, simply what you can do, you can put a ohm meter here, right? There is nothing, nothing connected. No supply is connected. You put a ohm meter here. You measure this. You measure this, right? With a simple ohm meter, we can measure R1 and R2, right? So you measure, for example, this voltage is V. This one is I. So R1 is V1. I think we show you this. V1 over right? The same thing you can do for the second day. But if you have only one is enough. If you have, for example, R1, you can calculate or even you don't need to measure the second day. Now, the DC test, DC test was very simple test. You can do it this way. The next one, let me see. Open circuit or circuit. Test number two. We call it no load. Or open circuit. So I call it no load. No load means there is no current here, right? If there is no current here, means here, what, what is here? It's open, right? That's the reason they call it open circuit or no load. No load or open circuit. First of all, we, let's say where we are going to measure this value. This is important. I'm going to give you an example here. I have a transformer. <coughs> Is it just listening? You listen to it. You don't have to write it. I have a transformer here. This is, for example, 5 kV, for example. 5 kV, for example, to, to 250 volts, for example. I don't know what kind of range it's going to be. What kind of ratio it's going to be. But the rated voltage from the transfer, primary of transformer is 5 kV. The rated voltage of the secondary is 250 volts. Basically, N1 over N2 is equal to 5,000 divided by 250. It's going to be 20, right? It's going to be 20 in the ratio. Now, I want to measure the parameter. I said open circuit test, right? Theoretically, either could be here open, right? Or here, right? There is no difference. You can keep one side open. One side is going to be open. But which side will be open? You know, we're going to look at it to see which side is going to be open. You're in, the, you're in your lab right now. Most of the multimeter, multimeter you have, it can measure up to, I think, 600 volt or something like that, right? It's the one you have in your lab, all right? So I can open here or I can open here. Which one do you think is better to keep it open? I should connect my supply to one side. I should connect my supply either here or here. Which one do you think is better? Connect it here or there? You're saying that what? <coughs> Give me a simple, you know, as I said, mathematically there is no difference. But practically, there is a difference, you know. You just go, go to the lower voltage, right? If you are here, you have to go to 5 kV. You can do it with a lower voltage. But let's say these are the nominal value for this transformer, right? Mm -hmm. So when you want to have, you connect this transformer to the real load, either this side or that side, the voltage is going to be this number, right? So if you are measuring PC, P4, you want to measure it at the nominal voltage, right? Later on, you can use it. Hey, at the nominal voltage, I have this much core loss, right? I can do the testing. 50 volt, right? But 50 volt, I don't know how much is the core loss. Then I have 250 volt. You have a homework, you are going to work on that one. When you change this voltage and how you can do it. But if I can measure that right voltage, why should I do that at another voltage? So I will go connect my source here. One. <coughs> easier. I can do it in the lab. And, and 
from the other side. I'm going to work with a safer voltage level than this one, right? So that's the reason. So keep in mind, this is very important. We do the open circuit test, the measurement. This is very, very important. The measurement of the open circuit test is going to happen at what side? I don't call it secondary. I'm going to call it low voltage side. Low voltage side. Low voltage could be secondary, could be primary. You know? For example, if it's, a, if it's a distribution, distribution means you brought all this power with this high power, very high voltage. Now the hox is in the lower low voltage side. So low voltage side is the secondary, right? You brought the power from the power plant, bring it down to connect it to my home, right? So the secondary is my home. But if you go back to the power plant, you have this generator. It's generating like 11 kV voltage, right? I want to connect it to the high voltage line, right? My primary is low voltage in this case. So I don't call it primary or secondary. I call it low voltage side. I'll do my measurement in the low voltage side. So the keep in mind. If we don't mention anything by default, whatever measurement you have for open circuit is in the low voltage side. I'll tell you how it's going to affect your calculation. Unless I mention, you know, no, I measured my values in the high voltage side, you know, that's it. But if I don't mention anything, the measurement for the open circuit is in the low voltage side. Keep in mind. So when I'm doing the, uh, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark it with the LV and LV means low voltage and uh, high voltage, HV. I'm gonna call the mark them with this one, LV and uh, HV. I'm gonna put them this way. Instead of one and two, I'm gonna use the LV and HV. Now I have a transformer here. Right? This is my HP side and this is my LV side, right? I'm going to connect a source here. I'm going to put the ammeter here to measure this current. When I connect this one, the current is going to go to here, right? Let's put the, let's put the switch here. There's a switch. I'm going to put an ammeter here, I'm going to put a voltmeter here, and a wattmeter here. I'm measuring three parameters. Current, voltage, and power. In which side? In the low voltage side, right? Low voltage side, keep in mind. So basically this is a NLV, this is the NH, right? And the secondary is open. There is no load over there, right? Now, let me go draw the circuit here. I'm going to go with the approximate model in this case also. So, it's going to be like this, right? RC, this is a V open circuit, right? Let's put the, let's, let's put the exact model for this. Let's put the exact model here. This one is going to be RHV, and this one is going to be uh, XHV, right? Right? 
So this one has to be prime, right? Now, let's see what we can measure here. Uh, first of all, do we have any current here? Do we or not? Do we have any current? No, it's open, right? So basically, I can get rid of this part of circuit. There is no current there, right? Let's get it. <coughs> right? This is a, we call this one IE, and we call this one IC, right? I think. I call, no, I am. This one was I am. And this one was the I, which is the I open circuit, right? Does I E change from the full load to no load or no load to full load? Does I E change? Does it? Does it or not? Yeah. No, why not? change the other one, you know, the high, you know, the high voltage side is open, you know, the low voltage side you are supplying. Uh, why is the uh, VOC squared to VOC? P is equal to a resistor, P is equal to a resistor, forget the, this point. We have a resistor, right, we have what, P here, R here, how much is the P? Yeah. 
right? Over R. So basically, P open circuit is going to be U of C to the power of 2 over RC, right? Yeah. Or you can say RC is equal to <coughs> right? Now, but I want to calculate it the other way. You know, I can go calculate the XM, there's a little bit, you know, with the impedance. I don't want to get you down. You can use the impedance to calculate it. But I want to calculate it kind of easier way. I 
शॉर्ट सर्किट है
I have my high voltage here, low voltage here. <coughs> low voltage is short, right? I will short the low voltage side. My measurement there is going to be on this side. I'm going to measure the voltage, which is the V short circuit, right? I'm going to measure the current, which is I short circuit. And I'm going to measure my volt, my power, which is the P short circuit, right? Three measures. Now let's draw the circuit. If I'm going to draw the circuit here, this one is going to be like this. This one is going to be our low V, uh, sorry, H. One thing I forgot to say, you know that. I said we do we do power up the high voltage side in the short circuit test. And usually the system is like this, you know, when you do this one. This is a variable source. This is a variable source. You put it on the zero volt first. You short here, right? There is no current. When you do go to the lab or in the I don't know a, a substation, you need to do this test. You have to be very careful. You start Slowly, slowly, you start to bring up this voltage. Very, very slow. Because here it's short, if it might. If you go fast, you're going to kill the transformer. Suddenly, you go 10 times of the rate of current of the transformer. You slowly bring the voltage up, and you look at this current. As soon as this current hits the full current, rated current, you stop. You don't change the voltage anymore. And you do your measure voltage, current, and power. So basically, I said the open circuit test. We tested to the nominal voltage, right? We increased the voltage to the nominal voltage. What was the advantage of that? I measured my P-core off, right? Here, keep in mind, I test my system with a nominal current. I increase my voltage slightly until my current rate reaches to full load current, right? Can you tell me what's the advantage of this? 
write anything before the open circuit, right? Now all the value is there. Now.
is equal to R prime L V, which is going to be R short circuit over two. R short circuit one. If we don't have a DC test path. If we have a DC test path, you know, one of them we know, and the other one we can calculate it. Now, see, this is every transformer you look at is going to have this one. They, they call it name plane. There's a plane on the transformer. This value, and usually the cosine T also is there. It says how much is the nominal power factor of this transformer. So we have a transformer with those nominal values. I'm going to go through those one, calculate V and I and all those things. It's not part of this example, but because it's the first time, we are just saying nominal rated, because I want to tell you what does it mean those things. We have done this test. You can see on the left side, we measure those values. Now it's asking us to do this. First, you know, so we want to uh, I don't know which side is it. Let's know if we can write it down if you want. I want to draw the equivalent circuit of the transformer in the high voltage side. In the high voltage side. You know, that's the first question. Can you ask her to come back because I need to talk to the concrete? Can you support she later? Because if she goes now, it's going to be difficult to find. So the first assumption is you want to calculate the uh, uh, equivalent circuit in the high voltage side. In this 
inside my nominal voltage is V and H, right? So that for the 10,000 divided by this value is going to be the number is say 4 point, how much? 5, 5? Was it that much? So the nominal current in the high voltage side is 4.55. The nominal voltage on the high side is how much? 2.2 kV. How about here? V nominal low voltage is this much. How about I nominal low voltage? I think you need to understand this term when you read the question or somebody talks to you first, you need to understand what he's saying. When you say nominal voltage, what's nominal? Low gas. Nominal is as thing as this much, you know. So the nominal voltage here is this much. Nominal voltage is here. So how much is the I N I N L V? Basically it's going to be S N divided by V N L. See? One thing if you pay attention, S N is the same for both sides. Doesn't matter, you are here or you are there. Right? S N is 10 kV. Correct? So basically it's going to be 10,000 divided by 220. I think it's going to be 45.5. Am I right? Nominal current and voltage on the high voltage side, nominal current and voltage on the low side, and the rate is not KV. Now, we, we figured out this one, right? Let's look at this table now. Can you tell me the measurement on the OC? Where they, where they measure the values? Keep in mind, we said we do the open circuit or normal test with what? Nominal voltage, right? How much voltage? Very close to the nominal voltage. In this case, it's exactly what it is, but sometimes it's not exactly. For example, if you check something like that. Very close to the nominal voltage, right? I did this test with this voltage, right? Means I measured my values where? Here, right? My voltmeter, current meter, and power meter, they were all here, right? Now, let's look at this. Tell me what, where did I do my short circuit test? I mean, when I'm saying where did I do my short circuit test, where did I measure my value? We got here 4.55, right? 4.55, right? I didn't be the nominal part. So here, right? How much is the core loss for this transformer? And the nominal voltage? How much is the core loss? How much is the core law? And the what? Why? Because I see my open circuit test with the nominal voltage, right? Remember we said the core law is the open circuit to the power of 2, right? Divided by RC, right? Can you remember that? I said it like it's 30 minutes ago, right? We said the open circuit is the open circuit to the power of 2 over RC. If my voltage is the nominal voltage, so my core loss is for the nominal <coughs> voltage, right? So P4 is how much and the voltage. How much is my copper loss at the half half of the load, full load? How much is my copper loss? How much is it? How much? If somebody says five five extra points, if somebody says. How much is the copper loss? And I want to make you think a little bit more. 115 watts. Uh, 115 watts? 150 watts. We don't have it. Maybe you know what you do, right? Now, what's my question again? Let's just go through a regular one. Waste time. I said, how much is the copper loss at 50% uh, of the load or half of the full load? How much is the copper loss at full load? Why? Because I did this test with the full load part, right? right? <coughs> Right? Well, I ask how much is that half? I ask how much is that half, right? So the copper loss is R square, right? The copper loss is this much, right? If I, <coughs> I know R I full load is how much? 215. I ask you how much is, R is not going to change, right? R is going to be whatever the transformer, you cannot change the R. Whatever is the R is R. Now if I make my current half, how much is 
this one Sam. The same? Yeah. You guys are saying, oh, so you guys know me. 
So let's go calculate. How much is the RC? RC is going to be open circuit. So how much is the IC and IM? It's going to be I open circuit, right? So sine Q open circuit, I don't know how much it's going to be. This one is going to be I open circuit, sine Q open circuit, right? This is going to be 4.55, no sorry, 2.5. 2.5 times 18, how much is it? 2.5 times 18. 0.45. 0.45. And how much is this one? 2.5 times 0.98. It's going to be 4 point something. 2.45. So I calculate IC and IM, right? I can build IC and I. Now, how much is the RC? It's going to be DOC over IC. And XM is going to be DOC over IM, right? So basically, it's going to be 220 over how much? 0.45. And this one is going to be 220 over 2.45. divided 
by y short circuit to the power of 2. Right? How much is the P short circuit? 215. Divided by how much? 4.55. Right? Thank you. 
person is a little bit weird, I'll tell you why. Because usually the load is connected to the low voltage side. We went the other way, you know, but that's fine. For calculation, it doesn't matter. But the right way was to connect the load to the 220 volt. But that's fine. This is okay, also. there's no problem here. Now, I know my current. I know my voltage. I can calculate my voltage here at 75% of full load, right? <coughs> How much is the V3, V prime LV? V prime LV is 
I just don't get why times 0.75 was given. This is 75% of the full load. Of the full load. Yeah, I said calculate the voltage regulation at 75% of the full load. Full load part. I don't say part, I say full load. That's your, this is a full load. Okay. This is a full load. So full load means a nominal part. part. Full load means nominal part. Regular okay. part. Yes. So, now, I want to finish with the example at this point. So the next, the next <coughs> part is going to be, you get the action somehow. Uh, uh, let's calculate the efficiency at full load. Do I want to calculate the efficiency at full load? Let's calculate the efficiency at full load. Let's calculate the efficiency at full load at some power factor. Let me see if I have any number over there. Because the power, power factor also should be given. We want to calculate, the, the, the question is, we want to calculate the efficiency at the full load mm -hmm. for a load with a power factor of 0.6. So the low power factor is 0.6. We want to calculate the efficiency at full load. So let's calculate A. We said B2 I2 cosine phi over B2 I2 cosine phi, right? Uh, plus ECU plus P core, right? Mm -hmm. This is We said full load, what power factor? 0. 0.6, right? This is an S, right? You can say S cosine phi over S cosine phi plus PCU plus P core, right? We said full load. How much is the S at full load? How much is the S full load? 10,000, right? 10 kV. So this is a 10,000. How much is the cosine phi? We said at 0 0.6, right? How much is the copper loss at the full load? Copper loss at the full load. How much is the copper loss at the copper loss at the full load? Hmm? If we say the short circuit test will give you the copper loss. This one is at the full load, right? Break the card. So basically this is the copper loss at the full load, right? So it's only 215. How much is the core loss? Because this one is done with nominal voltage, right? <coughs> and so the efficiency is going to be 95.3. 95.3.
This one was the R short circuit I to the power of 2, right? Times PC, right? And he said, I short circuit, I is going to be PC over R, R short circuit, right? How much is the PC? 100 volt, right? <coughs> How much is the R short circuit? He calculated some regulation. I think it was 10.3, right? Can you calculate this number? What percentage of full load is happening? So 0.7 times how much is the full load? 10,000, right? What's the power factor we said? 0.6, right? Transform. So we have a 220 volts, 
220 volt, 60 hertz transformer, single. Had is there this loss of 340 volt? He said this transformer at this frequency has a pH of 340 volt. And any current loss of 120, P80 is 124. If the transformer is operated from 230 volt, now the voltage becomes 230 volt. Now new voltage. This is the old new. We are going to run this transformer at 230 volt and how many hertz? 50 hertz. We change the source from 220, 60 hertz, to 230, 50 hertz. Uh, uh, calculate the new core loss. Calculate the new core loss. He said, assume the statement constant is 0 0.6. If you remember, he said, E is E is AH.
So, very simple. I'm going to give for two cases. V1 <coughs> over V2. Once I'm going to put the 220 volt, 60 hertz. One I'm going to put 230 volt, 50 hertz, right? So, does N change N? No. Does A change? No. So basically, V1 over V2 is going to be what? F1 over F2 times Vm1 over Vm2. Right? Let's calculate. How much is the V1? Let's just calculate Vm1 over Vm2. Vm1 over Vm2 is going to be F2 over F1 times V1 over V2. Right? Now let's see. How much was number one? My V is 220. My frequency is 60, right? How much is the V2, F2? 230, 50. Let's replace it. So it's going to be 50 times 220 divided by 60 times 230. with a single phase transformer. Now you are going to go work on your homework. And uh, we are going to start. I'll talk a little bit about the other transformer in the next class. And after that, <coughs> we'll call them warrior. 
And after that, we are going to go to the three phase. Hope you finish the wrap up everything by the end of next week for Trump. It's going to be week five, right? And by this point, I am sure we are not going to make it to the uh, low floor. Power floor. The chapter six I said, the last part of the small side portion, we are not going to get there. that. That's what no way we can cover. You know? We are going to go to the model of the you know, parameter calculation of transmission line, model of the transmission line, how to model it, and how to become uh, short circuit study and those kind of stuff. We are going to finish out with the uh, last. And we cannot get the notes. Unfortunately, the time is not a little bit.